Hey everyone, Terry Fifth again, and I wanted to do a quick update on the uh, Korg Electride. Um, my original review of it was uh, a lot more popular than I expected, um, pretty well received, and uh, about a month ago Korg finally came out with a much anticipated operating system update. Um, so I thought it'd be a good time to kind of go over some of the new features in that, um, talk about some of the bugs that were fixed, and kind of just update everybody on my thoughts on Electride um, now, now that I've been playing with it for a while. Um, I have a lot of people contacting me just wanting to know what I think of it uh, now that I've had more time to use it for some live use and things like that. Um, so yeah, to start with, uh, roughly about a month ago, like I said, uh, OS 1.1 came out for the Electribe. Um, I think that's only for the Electribe synth version. I'm not sure if that's for the sampler version as well. I don't have that yet. Um, I'm living in Europe right now and it really hasn't hit the stores here yet, um, except for a few pre-orders. Um, one of the biggest new changes to the upper system, at least as far as I'm concerned, is that uh, insert effects um, now carry over across pattern changes. So if you have a delay on two patterns and you switch um, from one pattern to the next, um, those delay tails will carry over. Um, you have to have the exact same effect uh, on each part for this to work. Um, it doesn't uh, carry over note tails, still get cut off. Um, but that's a huge, huge improvement as far as like smoothing out pattern transitions. Uh, and I'll show that a little bit more in depth here, close up in just a minute. Um, some of the other new features, uh, you can now export a stereo wave file of your pattern sets or just patterns individually. Um, you're no longer limited to stems or Ableton Live format. Um, you can copy parts between patterns now. This is another huge, huge feature that a lot of people are asking for. So um, if you've got one pattern with a great part, um, it's easy to uh, switch to the next pattern and copy over um, that previous part, so you don't have to recreate it from scratch anymore. A, a great, great time saver. Um, Korg also says there's an improved uh, XY touchpad response. Uh, I don't know exactly what they're referring to. It does seem things like the touch are a little more responsive as far as timing goes. It's a little harder to kind of get that to jump out of time. Um, I don't use that feature all the time, so I'm sure there's others out there more familiar with some of the improvements on that aspect. Um, another thing that was kind of a common complaint when this first came out was there was clicking in it. Um, you'd be playing like a bass line or things and it would just make random clicking noises. Um, at first we thought maybe that was just, you know, there was too much volume and it was clipping. Um, but even at lower volume, some people could reproduce this. Um, and in the new uh, OS update that's greatly reduced, I've read that uh, some people still have issues with it, but um, even people who ran into this problem all the time before say that um, it's much more improved now. Uh, it's not something I really see myself. I'd, I'd heard some clicking before in the first OS, um, but uh, for me it was never really a huge issue. It wasn't something I ran into all the time. Uh, another useful function is that when you're in step edit mode, things like gate time, uh, you can increment those values in uh, orders of 10. So it goes 10, 20, 30, 40. Um, and you can hold shift to fine tune values. Um, so it's much, much quicker to edit things when you're in uh, step edit mode. Uh, another bug that was squashed, it was kind of annoying for some people, was that uh, when you're in mute mode, you couldn't use the shift plus these trigger pads to access the different shortcuts to jump around um, the menu system. It would actually unmute parts if you were in mute mode. So you'd think you were jumping to your groove setting and you might unmute a track by mistake. Uh, and that's been fixed now, which is really nice. Um, and then a couple small graphic changes to the display. Um, we now have a, a battery indicator. It's only a three bar battery indicator. It's not super accurate, um, but at least you get some, you know, you can see somewhat um, what your battery life is like so it doesn't just die on you and turn off like before. Um, and also there's a small little icon when you're recording motion sequences. So, um, you know, if you forgot you had record pressed and you start turning the knobs, you can actually see that you're actually recording motion sequences. Uh, and then finally, the last thing I think I've noticed uh, is that um, in the last uh, OS, when you were actually going to write a pattern, if, the, if it was playing, a lot of times it would, it would pause, it, would, it might stutter for a second. Uh, and at least for me, that's been greatly reduced. It's not totally fixed, but probably nine times out of 10, I can write a pattern while it's playing and uh, it no longer glitches or, or, or kind of lags behind time like it used to. It's probably still not stable enough on that aspect to use like maybe live, but if you're you know in the studio working on a song and you're you know just jamming away, you don't have that little glitch bug in you every time you save anymore. Um, like I said, it's still there for some people, and I haven't really narrowed down if it's how busy the pattern is or not, but uh, it's still much, much better than it was before. So um, all in all, some pretty welcome updates, especially um, being able to couple par copy parts between patterns and the new um, insert effects tails carrying over from pattern to pattern. Um, those are going to be really useful for not only playing live, but preparing live sets for me. Um, so now I'm going to go in and show you just a couple of these features um, a little more in depth so you can see what I'm talking about as far as like the insert effect tails uh, and things like that. 
Uh, and then we'll come back and talk about, uh, you know, a little bit of overall thoughts on the Electribe now that I've had it for a while. Thanks. Okay, so now we're kind of zoomed in on the Electribe a little closer. As you can see, uh, some of the new features here I want to show you that uh, were released in OS 1.10. Um, the first thing I'll show you is how the uh, insert effects carry over. Um, I have two identical patterns um, with only one part playing right now. Um, they both have the exact same insert effect. Um, the second pattern, I've deleted all the notes though, so you can hear when I switch patterns that the delays will actually carry over into the second pattern. So this is the first pattern. I'll cue up the next pattern, it'll change at the end of four bars. And you can hear those delays, those delay tails carry over now because I have the same insert effect on both parts. Um, super, super useful, really happy with that. Um, it definitely makes pattern transitions much, much smoother. Uh, the other thing I can show you is the new step editing um, feature, which is not a big deal, but does help a little bit speed, speed up the workflow. Um, now for some of the step edit parameters like gate time, um, when you change the value of a note length, uh, it increments in values of 10 um, and you can hold shift to fine tune. Again, not a big deal, but if you do a lot of step time editing, um, it definitely speeds up the workflow a lot. Uh, the other thing I mentioned was that there's also um, an indicator on the display when you're motion recording. So if I go ahead and start recording and tweak a knob, um, you can see it says motion record there. So just a nice little visual reminder that you have the record button enabled um, so you don't save your pattern accidentally with uh, motion sequences you don't want. Um, and then uh, the other really useful thing I found is that, uh, like I said, if I take out the power power supply here, um, there's a small battery icon now that shows you your battery strength. Um, I've got three full bars right now, but um, that's definitely a lot better than having the Electribe just suddenly shut off on you in your middle of working and you haven't saved. At least you can see if you're getting low on battery. Um, so, you know, not a lot of really, really super um, even revolutionary new ideas in the OS, but they did fix some bugs and add some useful features that um, I think a lot of people will find really, really helpful. Um, so let's cut back and I'll tell you my overall thoughts um, on the Electribe now that I've been using it for a few months. So that was just a quick little overview of some of the new features and the new operating system. Um, as far as my overall thoughts on Electribe still, now that I've had more time to use it uh, and taking into consideration some of the new features and the new OS update, um, I'm still really happy with it. Um, it continues to surprise me the kind of sounds I can get out of it. Um, it reminds me a lot of the Teenage Engineering OP1. Um, not a lot of parameters on board. You might look at it and think it seems not really well featured, but um, with a little bit of tweaking and experimenting, you can get some really wild textures and sounds out of this thing. Um, the slow LFOs are great for like long evolving grooves and things like that. Um, and again, the sound quality is awesome. Um, I think I mentioned in the first review, one of the issues I do notice about it is that uh, overall, if you're not uh, paying attention to it, it's very easy to make very mono sounding patterns. All the oscillators are mono. Um, I hear that a lot in people's songs they post online and their YouTube videos, you know, all the sounds are straight up the middle. There's not much stereo information going on. Um, so I have to remind myself a lot to pan things and use some of the stereo effects to kind of mitigate that. Um, the other slightly frustrating thing I still kind of battle with on enough tribe is that every time I'm almost off with a pattern, you know, I, I got some really awesome grooves happening. I'm happy with the way things are going. Um, I start running into voice stealing. Um, I know there's only 24 voices on it, um, but sometimes I might only get five, six, seven parts max before I start running into voice stealing. Um, notes will start getting their tails cut off, the delays cut off, um, parts just won't sound in general. Um, there is the high and low priority settings for each voice that kind of can help with this somewhat, but um, even then I find that I often will get really close to having a pattern I'm totally happy with and I still have to go back and change filter types um, to something maybe not quite as ideal as I would have liked or shorten my delay tails, um, use uh, shorter amp envelope release stages, things like that. Um, by far that's my biggest frustration with the Electribe. I, I can get some really great sounds out of this thing. I wish that um, I almost wish it cost more and had a little bit more DSP power so we could get like at least, you know, consistently eight parts using all the different functions per part. Um, as it is right now, I do spend a lot of time towards the end of the pattern writing process going back and trying to like scale back my writing just to uh, make sure that all the parts are playable. Um, and I'm not getting, you know, things muted and parts dropping out and things like that. Um, but overall, I'm still happy with it. I've done uh, one short little live set already that uh, turned out much better than I expected and that was before the new OS update. So Having things like uh, the, inner, the uh, insert effect tails carry over will be a huge help for that. Um, I'm still really happy with it. I, I hate to say 
that it's a great deal for the money because it should be a good piece of gear regardless of what it costs. But for roughly $400, it's pretty amazing the sounds you can get out of this thing. And um, there's a lot more depth there than you might realize just going through the somewhat brief manual that Korg has um, that still hasn't really been updated too much um, to make things a little clearer on functionality. Um, so yeah, overall, two thumbs up for me still. I think it's a great little unit. Um, the battery power aspect uh, is super, super handy. Um, it's August here in Europe, things are hot. There's times I want to get out of the studio and just go outside in the woods or on my deck and uh, write music and just, it's great being able to grab a pair of headphones, take that outside uh, and just keep working on music in something more comfortable or different environment. Um, I wish more gear was battery power to be honest. So yeah, I mean, I'm happy with it. It's uh, I've had some other projects in the works right now that haven't had spent as much time with it as I'd like. Um, but now that those are kind of off my plate, I plan on coming up with some more live sets and just coming up with you know, new pattern ideas to use in my studio songs too. So hopefully I'll have some new material to share with you shortly. Um, and I will go ahead and link um, my last live set that I referred to uh, here at the bottom of the screen if anybody wants to check that out. Um, as before, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments uh, and I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can. Thanks and stay tuned for more music.